Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful. Cause I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me. To everyone I see. Let us love one another with our love like no other yet. That's the way you love us, God. Never turn away, you are with us every day, yeah. That's the way you love us, God. Your love is always been beginning to end. There's never been a better friend. So let us love one another with our love like no other yet. That's the way you love us, God. Yeah. You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountain top I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with our love like no other yet That's the way you love us, God party lately maybe it's not been the same lately right during COVID and stuff and maybe has been a while but think back to what like big birthday parties are like and maybe your favorite birthday party this is a birthday party uh, donut on a string it's a very famous game you should try it it's really fun but when you go to a birthday party and whenever my kids go to one of their friends birthday party I always remind them make sure that you the person make the person feel special right the person whose birthday it is you want them to feel special because that's what it's about you want the birthday person to know that you are there for them and that everyone makes a big deal and wants you to be happy so usually you get your choice of all the different things right your friends come and they do what you want to do like for me i always wanted to go to laser tag for my birthday um, or play some board games or just do some funny stuff and get laughing. Uh, they get to come and eat what you want to eat, you get to pick out. For me, that was usually ice cream cake. And then they bring you all kinds of things that you like, right? You get presents. So birthday parties were a lot of fun. This is another one of mine. And with my best friends growing up, usually we would want to do a sleepover party. And I remember uh, my, at my best friend's house, I would go to her house and we'd always uh, like walk into town and get a treat like at one of the local places we'd go to the movie store and pick up usually an action movie and we get some snacks like chips or we we get fruit and whipped cream often and then we'd set up our beds in the living room and we just stay up really late and talk so that was what some of my birthdays were like and in your parent guide today there's a game that you should try out with your family and it's it goes like this I'm going to my friend's party and I'm bringing, and the first person has to say something that begins with A. And then the next person has to say something that begins with B, and they have to remember all the things before them. So like, um, I'm going to my friend's birthday and I'm bringing uh, action movies, okay? And then the next person, I'm going to my friend's party and I'm bringing action movies and bracelet making kits, okay? The next person, I'm going to my friend's party and I'm bringing uh, action movies, bracelet making kits, and crayon candles. 
I don't know, it could be foods, right? Different foods that's maybe easier, but play that game, see how far in the alphabet you can get before someone forgets something. But it's fun to bring things to a party, especially things that the birthday person would like, right? Because the day is supposed to be all about them. And when you think about it, really, what you want on your birthday, beyond just like the, the stuff to do and the things to eat, right, is you want to have the people that love you with you, to hang out with you, to enjoy your time together, right? You know that the people there really love you and care about you. Then you feel loved, you know your friends care. That's really what it should be. So friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care, right? That's what a friendship is about. You need to know that the other person cares about you. So I was trying to think back to some specific birthday parties and really, I only remember what I have pictures of because, you know, you don't always remember as you get older. But when I asked about what I loved as a kid and I asked my best friend, Alicia, what she remembers about what we did. So there we are. Um, she couldn't think of anything specific either, but she talked a bit about our friendship and she told me something really interesting. And, you know, we've been friends since kindergarten, so it's been a really long time. And she said... I guess it wasn't like a moment so much as I just knew that you would always be there for me. So she said like when she was nervous or we'd go to big group things, she knew that I was always there beside her, spending time with her, and that helped a lot, right? So if you have a friend that's, that's going to be beside you, they're not going to go off with other people and leave you alone, you didn't have to worry about that, then you really know that you're there for each other. And so the action of being there with the person shows that you care, right? And that's what we said friendship is about. So it's important for us to have good friends. And it's important to be a good friend too, right? We can show love with the way we speak and the way that we treat people. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Today we have a great example from probably the very best friends that we can read about in the Bible. And if you were at our Kidville Park party the other night, then you recognize we talked a little bit about these guys in our Puppet Head Theater. And so this is coming up after we hear about, about Haley's friends. But the guys' names are David and Jonathan. We're going to check out what their friendship was like. But first, let's think about God's amazing love for all of us. He is definitely the one who's always there. He's always beside you. He's cheering you on. He's never going to leave you. He's there for us no matter what. And he is going to give us the example and the advice and the help to be a good friend and to love one another. So let's praise him and let's get on our feet and dance.
I sure do have a lot of friends. I have 2,762 of them. Uh, I met this girl in kindergarten and then she moved away after that. And oh, this guy friended me after I gave him my seat on the bus. And I have no idea who this person is. <gasps> hmm. I may have 2,762 friends on here, but I think I really only know like 10 of them. <laughs> I probably should have thought that through first. Anyway, real friends are people you should really know. So let me introduce myself if we haven't met. I'm Haley and I'm here to talk to you today about friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. You know how to tell who your real friends are? They show up in person, not just on your phone. They show up when you're happy and when you're having a party. They show up when you need help. They show up when you're sad and you need a shoulder to cry on. Real friends, your best friends, are there for you in the good times and the bad. Just like the two friends in today's story. They went through what every friendship goes through. The highs, the lows, running for your life from an angry king. Oh, okay, well maybe not every friendship goes through that part. <gasps> I wonder if one of my 2,762 friends can fix a broken phone. Oh, I know! I'll just call someone! Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Haley! I'll be right back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18, through 20. Now imagine for a moment that you're a prince. That's a pretty cool job. Your father, King Saul, is a fierce and handsome warrior with a hot temper. Away from me, you fools. Saul is the first ever king over the land of Israel. And since you're his son, most people expect you to be the next king. You'll live in a fine palace, wear royal robes, and carry the best weapons. Your name is Jonathan. Call me John. You got a great life, right? But then your dad hires a new guy, a young man your age named David, who's only a shepherd boy. But somehow, through the power of God, David has just defeated the giant Goliath, saving God's people in the battle against the Philistines. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Your dad has given David a place to stay in the palace in a high ranking army. You and David even become friends. Now imagine that David fights in every battle and wins. The people of Israel are even more impressed with him than they are with King Saul. King Saul is like great. Yeah, but have you seen David? He is like awesome sauce. To top it off, you've heard rumors that David has actually been chosen by God to be the next king of Israel instead of you. It would be so tempting to be jealous of David, to not talk to him or hang out with him. But that's not who Jonathan was. It's not what Jonathan did. In 1 Samuel, we discovered that instead of being jealous, Jonathan chose to share the best of what he had with his friend. Here, take my robe. Then people will see how important you are. Are you sure? Take my belt too, and my sword. But these are all things for a prince. You're worth it. Thank you, friend. King Saul, on the other hand, did become jealous. So jealous that he hurled a spear at David. And later on, he told Jonathan and all of his servants 
to kill David. Jonathan was horrified. He quickly warned his friend. Find a place to hide. I'll talk to my father and find out what's going on. The next morning, Jonathan faced King Saul. Don't harm David. He's helped you. He put his own life in danger to kill Goliath. The Lord used him to win a great battle. Why would you kill him? Okay, fine. I'll show you how awesome sauce I am by not putting David to death. Jonathan and David were relieved. And for a short time, all was well. But then King Saul went back on his word. He tried to kill David again. And when he failed, he sent other men to try to kill David. I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he trying to kill me? He won't do it. He tells me everything and he hasn't said a word about hurting you. That's because he knows we're friends and you would tell me. This is terrible. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends made a really complicated plan, like something out of a spy movie. Their top secret plot had David hiding instead of showing up for the feast, while Jonathan made up this story to try to find out how angry his dad was. Now, instead of going outside and talking to David about it, Jonathan chose to shoot arrows close to far like a secret message. In the middle of it all, their friendship stays strong. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Shake. Shake. The two young men made a promise to stay friends no matter what might happen next. Then, it's time to put the plan into action. When Saul discovered that David was missing, he was filled with rage. I knew it! You're on his side. That is so not cool. As long as he's alive, you'll never be king. Why do you want to put him to death? What has he done? Saul was so angry, he couldn't think clearly. He actually threw a spear at his own son. And Jonathan left immediately. And the next morning, he hurried to the place where David was hiding and sent their top secret arrow code message. When David realized things with the king were not good, the two friends ran to meet up. One last time. I'm so sorry. My father. I know. It's not your fault. Jonathan and David hugged each other and wept. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we promise to be friends. He will be a witness between us and our families forever. There was nothing more to say. David left the city to hide from Saul and Jonathan went home. Now Jonathan could have allowed Saul to kill David and maybe become king himself. But instead, Jonathan trusted God and chose to protect and love his friend. Wouldn't it be cool to have a friendship as strong as David and Jonathan's? Those guys would do anything for each other. Jonathan even risked his life to protect David, but that's what friends do. They love each other no matter what. Okay, okay, not that kind of love. I'm talking about the kind of love this guy Paul wrote about in one of his letters. You can find the letter in your Bible. It's called the Book of 1 Corinthians. You wanna know what love is? Here's some of what Paul wrote. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not brag. It is not proud. It does not easily become angry. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It never gives up. Love never fails. That's how you show love to a friend. You're not impatient with them. You don't get angry easily. You protect them and you stand up for them. And you never ever fail. Wait, love never fails? That seems kind of difficult. The truth is, for us, it's kind of impossible to love without failing. If you really want to love your friends the way God wants you to love, you're going to need God's help. After all, he knows more about love than anyone. He loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for our sins. And with God's help, you can love people more than you could ever do by yourself. So the one thing to remember today is this. Friends love one another. Sometimes friends fail, but that's okay. Friends also forgive, which is a good thing because because this was my friend Erica's phone and I think she's gonna be like, and I'm gonna be like, Aah. and then we'll laugh about it <laughs> because she's a real friend and so am I. So I'm gonna find a way to get her a new phone. 
I think I'll show up and tell her in person. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna call her or text her. <laughs> okay, goodbye friends, see you next time. So I think Jonathan and David knew that they loved each other. They knew the other person was there for them. And even if their circumstances are a little different from ours, right? Maybe you don't have an angry king after you with a spear. If we wanna have good friendships, then the other person has to know you care, right? That you're gonna be there for them. So I learned from my friend Alicia that friends love each other and are never gonna leave each other. You know that they'll stick by you and be loyal to hang out with you no matter what you're doing, rather than like leaving you behind. So it's important to include all your friends and reach out to them. You don't want them to think that you've forgotten them or that you've, you've started hanging out with someone else. You wanna make sure that they know that you love them. So you guys already might know something about this, but, oh, but there's actually different ways that people feel loved and different things that mean more to them and make them feel loved and appreciated. So like, do you have a friend or a family member who always wants to give you a hug when they say hello, right? Or maybe they just wanna sit really close or, or hold hands or something. They appreciate that, that physical hug. Do you have a friend who really likes presents and special things and they'll say like, oh, this, this necklace is from my aunt or oh, my friend got me this toy and they remember all those details. Do you have a friend who really lights up when you say something nice like, great job on your paper, or you look nice today, or you're always so thoughtful, you're great, and they, they really appreciate that. Do you have a friend who really likes it when you're going up to get a pencil and you get one for them too, or you're going to throw out your garbage and you just take everyone's garbage around them, or you do something helpful, you help them clean their room maybe when you're over. Do you have a friend that just wants someone with them, whatever they're doing, right? Even if it's something boring, they just wanna hang out, or they'll say, I haven't seen you in so long, and, and they want your full attention when they're talking so that they know that you're really listening, right? You may have heard it called love languages, and that's, that's a thing that people talk about, but what you need to do is find out what really means a lot to your friends, what makes them happy and what makes them feel loved, and then you go and do those things, and you say those things, and you show that you care. So that's our bottom line today. Friends love one another. That we know what that looks like, it might look a little different from person to person, but friends love one another. Can you guys say that with me? It's so simple, one, two, three. Friends love one another, right? And Jesus loved us first, and so we can love one another. And that's what we talked about in our songs. And let's pray, because we do need God's help. It is sometimes hard to love other people when they make mistakes or when our friends hurt us, we have to forgive them, that kind of thing. We wanna be able to love one another no matter what. So let's pray for God's help. God, thank you that you love us no matter what and that you can help us to love one another. Thank you for um, all the examples in the Bible and what your word says that a friend loves at all times. And God, I pray that you would help us to look for ways to show our friends that we care, that we love them this week. In Jesus' name, amen. So as you love one another this week, as you look for a way to have some connection with your friends, send them a message if you haven't seen them, uh, those you see every day or those you don't get to see very often. Have a great week and talk to your friends and uh, keep working hard on your schoolwork too. You guys got this. See you next week.